In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down some of my own favorite shots from the 2023 MLB season. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. What is up? Welcome back. Pete here. What is up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel yet again for another video. And in today's video, we are going to be breaking down my own shots, maybe roasting them, just having a little fun. I, I have five shots selected, and I'm going to just react. Some of them are my favorite shots, and then some of them I've selected to kind of explain what I was thinking in the moment and how I shot it, because I think it would provide some value to y'all, and that's what I'm here to do when I do these types of videos or any video on this channel, unless it's just vlogs of me drinking, which... Those aren't really to provide value. But anyway, let's get into this video. Let's start breaking down and reacting to some of my favorite shots from this year's season as we go into playoffs. The first shot I have for y'all is done on a 360 camera, and I'm just gonna be blunt with it here, and I don't wanna gatekeep. I've been using this a lot in the second half of the season. My colleagues and I are always looking for new angles and new ways to, you know, show fans the game that we, that we like to capture, and we're trying to innovate because I think social is changing so fast, and what fans want is always changing so that's what we're trying to do with these cameras and it looks like a drone a lot of people have been asking me how i do it it's a 360 camera on a long stick colleague joe nah kind of did it first in the london series but we kind of been working on it as the season goes out and trying to perfect it for postseason which is our biggest stage of course but as you can see i start off low angle and i do low angle because you can see more of the ground moving fast and then up here is not moving as fast so you get that kind of contrast if that makes sense and then i go up high and when i'm using the 360 camera if you haven't used it before it basically captures all 360 degrees and that means you can take the footage into their editing software and kind of keyframe where you want it to be as you make it into a normal video if that makes sense so i found that the faster you move it and the closer you get and then the wider you go when you keyframe it the better it's going to look so if i move around fast it looks kind of like an fpv drone and this is what i was trying to do here as i go low on blooper i move it up high to make it look more like a drone or kind of that video game angle watch out for bloopers flag and move it low and then mike obviously reacts to it here and gritties like he always does points at it and then i get right up in the celebration this is just a new angle that i wanted to try this right here is just very unique fans haven't seen this broadcast you don't really see this type of angle this is something that i've really been kind of trying to pioneer and as a team we've been trying to pioneer it's just a really unique angle the one thing i will say about 360 cameras especially when you put them on like a pole or something or a stick you can put them really anywhere you can get them really low you can get them really high um, you can put them pretty harmlessly closer to athletes and what i found players really react to this camera well it's a very unique perspective they like to see what's on the phone when you got it out at batting practice and you can do the tiny planet effect that i've done as well there's a ton of different things you can do with this camera most notably just getting that new vantage point so i think it's going to be used a lot in the future and i don't think it will be too long until you see broadcasts maybe even using it so take advantage of it now and try and innovate if you have the access to as you can see after they do the little celeb i move it back up high again really fast to make it look like a drone again ronald reacts to it here as he always does flashes a peace sign he's been doing it mike harris as i said has been doing it pretty much every time he reacts looks at it smiles whatever i have a whole compilation of of clips from him doing that so try this out if you have access to it it's definitely an investment that is worth it so this next shot is going to be b-roll it is a tight shot of juan soto digging into the box and there's some themes that i want to discuss with this shot um, that kind of go along with it we go into the shot here i'm on a 200 to 400 on a canon c70 and I'm zoomed in with the extender, really tight, obviously in 120 frames, 4K. And I just want to capture the details of the game. And this is what I'm talking about when I mean there's like some ongoing themes with this that I want to discuss is, is capturing supporting B-roll and, and varying up your focal lengths, as I've harped on many times before, is crucial to being a good storyteller and, and giving yourself other aspects other than game action to work with when you're making, you know, a feature piece, a hype video or whatever, or a highlight tape. You need these types of supporting shots and b-roll this is a tough shot to get especially if you're on manual focus the tighter the shot the harder it's going to be but any type of camera movement like this panning up capturing little details right juan looking at the pitcher him digging into the box with the dirt kind of sliding 
that type of stuff really goes a long way if you want to make a game recap or in Juan's case like a player hype video for next season you never know when we will use that shot we have so many entities and people who use our shots so I'm trying to give value to everyone when I get a shot like this it goes back to you guys if you're working for a team or a school or whatever these types of shots are crucial to storytelling features player mixtapes anything no matter the sport getting shots like this getting up tight is crucial Another shot that I want to discuss is kind of more on the side of how I shot it, and it is Kenley Jansen's 400th save. Now, Kenley and the Red Sox requested that we have a video person run out from the bullpen to the mound with him, and this happened to happen in Atlanta, and I was lucky enough to be able to capture this moment. Now, obviously, Kenley played for the Braves. He loves the content. This is a very unique thing because I've never done a run out with a pitcher from the bullpen. That being said, I shot it a little differently than I might have if it was just a routine play or a routine type thing. I shot it on F4 rather than F2.8. I was obviously on a gimbal here if we play it back. I'm in 4K60 for this as well. And as you can see, look, the, the depth of field isn't great here. It's not going to be that buttery like F2 that I could have gotten. But my main priority here was just to make it in focus, right? I think a lot of the time you get caught up in the, the gear and the aperture but you want it in focus. The last thing I wanted here was for Kenley to be back focused because if I'm on F2 and I'm wide, sometimes just the, the grandstand is in focus and Kenley's out of focus. And that is absolutely not what I wanted in a moment like this for an accolade like this and a milestone. I wanted it just to be in focus and I was comfortable with that at F4. Sometimes I go even higher if it's a bigger moment. I go to F5, 6 or something just to make sure whenever I'm wide on a gimbal because I have no control on the focus, I get it in focus because that is the priority here in a moment like this. Very unique shot. I probably won't do this again, probably for a long time. So I was very blessed to be able to capture it and it was really cool. Kenley posted it, Red Sox used it. So shout out Kenley for that one and the Red Sox because I was really happy with how this came out. It was a very unique vantage point. The next shot I want to go over is this Ronald Acuna Jr. home run from May against the Red Sox actually, same series as the previous shot. What I wanna discuss here is moving around and varying up where you're shooting from when you're shooting a game. As you can see, I'm in left field. I am not in a photo well or at field level, and that's okay. Sometimes you need to mix up your spots where you're shooting because you know how many shots I've got of Ronald hitting a home run on the first baseline? Like so many. I don't need another one of those over the years. Ronald, 470 foot lean back bomb, flips the bat to, I mean, you got the crowd in the background. Postseason shots like this go crazy. I love them. I, I love this angle. And as you can see, there's a little bit of shake if I play this back again. See the little shake? That's because I was standing on a stairwell and there was like a stampede of fans that decided to come up at the same time. I've said this before. I've said it to people I work with. I've said it on social media. And in any of these videos, like not every shot's gonna be perfect. It's gonna happen. You're gonna get blocked. People are gonna shake the stairwell that you're shooting on. There's really no point in getting mad over things you can't control. And I promise you there's gonna be another shot like this, another home run, another dunk, another touchdown. It's not the end of the world. There's no point in being mad about this or being mad at the people who did this. But going back to my original point, make sure you mix up where you're shooting from. It is very crucial to do this because, you know, if you're making an end of season hype video or a video telling a player's story, such as a feature, you you don't want five of the same shots. You don't want five home runs from the same angle. Think about it if you're watching a piece like that as a viewer, what's more engaging? Five home runs from five different spots or five home runs from the same spot? Think about those things when you're shooting a game or, or anything for that matter. Another Ronald Acuna Jr. shot or the final shot I wanna go over. And this is like a pretty, you know, common theme because he's had just a absolutely monster year but this is a stolen base in slow motion and I'm on a 200 to 400 and it is raining a little bit going into this game I knew I wanted to make kind of a motion tracking ASMR video and it did really 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 well on social and Ronald used it too and liked those types of edits so going into this I was kind of shooting this shot for a video like that. In a motion tracking edit like this, I need to shoot a little bit wider so it gives a little more space um, whenever it motion tracks in AE and the edges of the frame and whatnot. So I shot a little wider than I, than I would have liked if I hadn't been shooting for that video. But again, if you're working in a 4K sequence or for, with a 4K shot, you can punch in. As you can see, Ronald's getting ready to steal here. Always be aware of your situations. I've talked about this before. Player tendencies, when they're going to steal. Same thing goes for football, where you think they're going to throw the ball, when a team's going to blitz. 
it's important to be aware of your scenarios and your situations. And I'm going to pause this as I'm panning. If you are using a lens with different stabilization modes or a camera body with different stabilization modes, for example, Canon has three stabilization modes on their telephoto lenses and then like two on the 7200. The second one is for when you're panning. So whenever I do a shot like this, if I know I'm going to be like tracking a pitch or tracking a base runner, I always switch my mode to two and that will keep it more steady than it would you know if I was on the, the first stabilization option just something to think about little differences like that can make your shots that much better I'm in manual focus not every step of this steel is in focus but I do pretty good at the crucial parts here and the steel and the slide everything and the edit turned out great it's raining they're in the city connects had a lot of those this year um, of Ronald Steelen and I think that was definitely my favorite one. Thanks y'all for watching this video. I hope you were able to take some value out of this. I hope there was some lessons in there. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know below in the comment section. But anyway, thanks for watching another one of my videos and I will see y'all in the next one. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Come on now.